Linked genes are two or more genes that are on the same chromosome and do not assort independently. The only way to separate linked genes is actually through crossing over, where two chromosomes exchange genetic material through swapping. The organism that I will be using to demonstrate these concepts will be the common household cat, or more specifically, my dilute tortoiseshell cat. Her name is Maya, and even though she is a mix of gray and tan fur, for the purpose of this video, we will say that her phenotype is dilute black. So using her, we are going to look at fur color, black or orange, eye color, green or blue, and fur shading, dilute or normal, as our three linked genes or loci. So for Maya's case, her phenotype is big B, little b for black fur, yet her genotype for fur shading is big F, little f, making her fur color gray, even though the allele codes for black. So here on the top left is a little picture of Maya's chromosomes. She's completely heterozygous, so her one chromosome represents her three dominant alleles, black fur, green eyes, and dilute shading, which, while the bottom chromosome represents her recessive alleles. The genetic map is on the right and shows where the loci are located on the chromosome. The coefficient of confidence is shown below the genetic map and is 0.74. In order to accurately determine the amounts of crossing over and recombination that occur, we have to cross Maya with another organism who is the opposite of her, in our case, a recessive individual with orange fur, blue eyes, and normal shading. This is the picture of my stepsister's cat, Nelly. His chromosomes can be seen here and show us he is completely recessive for all of the genes. So when we cross Maya and Nelly, we get eight different gamete types, and all of their phenotypes, genotypes, and chromosomes are shown here. Notice how some of them look exactly like their parents, while others express different traits from different parents. The two gamete types that have the same expression as their parents are considered no crossover, or NCO gametes, because their genes stay linked and did not experience any crossing over. However, all of the other gamete types experienced some sort of recombination. On this slide, I have grouped all of the progeny into which type of crossover event happened. On the bottom are the previously discussed NCO gametes that did not experience any crossovers. However, on the top, we have the gametes that are labeled DCO for double crossover. This means that their chromosomes exchange genetic material at two different places, somewhere here and somewhere here. You can calculate the probability of this happening by multiplying the length of the space um, in space one and space two, and then multiplying it by the coefficient of confidence. This tells us that there is a 1% chance of having a double crossover. If we want to know the probability of getting only an orange-haired, green-eyed, and normal-shaded cat, we would multiply that number by 0.5. So we, know that when a so we know that when crossing Maya and Nelly, there's a 1% chance of a double crossover event and a 0.5% chance of a specific DCO event. For single crossovers, where the genetic material is exchanged somewhere in only one of the spaces between the loci, you take the length of the space and subtract the probability of a DCO event. Then, if you want a specific phenotype produced by an SCO event, multiply by 0.5. For our SCO1 event, we took the length of space 1 and found that there was a 6.99% chance of a crossover here, and a 3.5% chance of a specific single crossover event in space 1. Since space 2 is longer, there is a higher chance of crossing over happening there.